You know how to calculate the gravitational force when you have two point masses. If I have a mass m1 and another mass m2 and they're separated by a distance r, we know that mass 1 feels an attractive force from mass 2, and we know that mass 2 feels an attractive force from mass 1, and we know that these forces are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. And the magnitude of the force is given by g m1 m2 over r squared. Okay. What about when you have larger masses? Well, for bodies with spherically symmetric mass distributions, we can treat them as if all of the mass of each were concentrated at its center. What does that mean? Well, suppose you have a large mass, and I'll call that one m1, and then you have another large mass, I'll call that one m2. All that really matters when we're calculating the gravitational force that one feels from the other, as long as they're spherically symmetric, is the distance between their centers. We'll call that r. So in this case, the force would be g m1 m2 over r squared. That's the force that each of these would feel due to the other one. Okay, well, what about if I have a really massive object, and I'll say it has a mass of m, and I have a center right here, and I'm going to dig a hole all the way through this planet, we'll say, from one side to the other. And then I take a little mass, call that a little m, and I drop it down the hole. When it's a distance r from the center, what gravitational force would this little mass feel? Well, again, turns out all that matters is the distance from the center. The force it would feel would be g little m times a big M divided by r squared, where r is the distance from the center of the big mass. Again, this applies only when we have spherically symmetric mass distributions. Incidentally, this is why it took Newton so long to publish his Universal Law of Gravitation. He wasn't quite comfortable treating planets and moons as point masses. And he needed calculus to figure that out, and it took him a while to figure out how to prove it so that he was satisfied with it. Also, this explains why things like moons and planets, these are large massive objects, tend to be spherical, and things that don't have as much mass, like asteroids, tend to be lumpy. Since each little bit of mass is attracted to every other little bit of mass, things that are really massive tend to form spherical shapes, while things that are less massive don't have the pull from all the other nearby mass elements, and they can stay kind of lumpy.